Hey, hi everybody. My name is Jerry Wise, and I want to talk to you about dysfunctional families, narcissistic parents, and the dirty ways that they stop you from detaching from them. And I want to talk to you about that today. I've been helping people for 45 years to get their family of origin out of them. I have worked with many types of dysfunctional families, and today I want to talk about the struggle that many have regarding detachment from narcissistic parents. Now, certainly there are some dirty ways that uh, are a little more obvious, such as money is a way, a dirty way to keep us from detaching from parents, whether narcissistic or any other kinds of parents. Uh, Money can be a way to keep you involved. Inheritance. I think other dirty kinds of ways are dangling acceptance and then offering love bombing or conditional love, then dangling acceptance and conditional love. And, And they dangle that in front of us only to be like uh, Charlie Brown in the Lucy cartoon where she puts the football down, he runs to kick it, and she pulls it back every time. The narcissistic parent will end up doing that as well. They'll set the ball down, say, let's have a good time. Here, come and kick the ball. We'll have fun. And then as soon as you get there, they pull it back and then give you some criticism, doubting you, doubting your reality, shaming guilting, and this causes lots of problems because it keeps us hanging on because we want the climax of getting acceptance, getting unconditional love, them just apologizing, them, you know, just having that wonderful moment that normal people have, whoever they are, but normal people will have because it feels satisfying when those things happen. Or somebody just giving you a positive word that's not conditional. You really do uh, look good in that dress, you know, except for your hair. You know, you really are very pretty for a fat girl. You know, Jerry, you're handsome except that you're fat and bald. I mean, again, it's that it, it can't just be you look nice today. And just leave it at that. It can't do that. And then we keep running after that and pursuing that. And that keeps us attached rather than detached. And again, the more obvious ones are some fear, just downright fear of what they might do or how they might disown you. Making threats, threatening the inheritance, threatening don't come to our house anymore, don't ever call us for help again. You know, kind of abandonment fears. They will use those dirty tricks to prevent us from detaching from them. And again, it's not so much that they're making us pursue them, but because of our programming, we continue to pursue them. The good news is that you can break that pursuit. And I've got a program listed down below in the description. You might want to join us for a six-module program on family differentiation and finding a new self. And you can also get that with 12 months of group coaching once a month with me for a year. Other ways in which they may keep us from detaching is trauma bonding. Because there are two ways to enmesh with someone. If you're going to enmesh with someone, there's a couple of ways to do it. And both are kind of dirty. But they're often unconscious. I'm not blaming anybody. That we All of us do these things one way or another, typically. But when we are enmeshing, we are getting lured away from having a self. What we see as more pleasing or positive way is over-functioning, people-pleasing, pursuing you being dependent on me. All those things are ways to enmesh you with me so that you don't detach. Let me overfunction with you. Let me let me please you. Let me give you all kinds of compliments. Let me share with you, I will love you like no person has ever loved you before. You know, making those promises, uh, being dream sellers, so to speak. Um, and even those who do it for not bad, malicious motives, but they're just, they don't realize that taking over someone's emotional life is an enmeshment act. And it actually lessens their sense of self rather than them gaining a sense of self. 
So you can lure away from having a self by over-functioning, doing all that. Narcissists will do that too. They'll give you this. They'll say you're so great. When they do that with the golden child, and then you win their loyalty. Well, if somebody's got to win my loyalty that way, I'm giving up some of myself to do that. Second of all is the use of trauma. And this is where trauma bonding comes in. The abuse, the criticism, the chronic criticism Maybe they didn't do anything absolutely horrible at one time, but they spent years of chronic criticism. That's pretty damaging, as well as those individual acts of abuse of some kind, physical abuse or sexual abuse. They also will, besides chronic criticism, destroy your reputation, your character, and move on into smear campaigns. There's one way to get me to trauma bond to me, and I discovered this in organizations that I was in. If you reject someone from that organization or you scapegoat them, then they're going to be trauma bonded to you and you're going to be trauma bonded to them. There's going to be a lot of obsessing and thinking about that for often months, weeks, years. It's a way to stay connected and not getting detached. Hopefully they will work on their detachment and move on. Hopefully, whoever was inside the group will do the same. The same is true for families. If you want to get someone trauma bonded, scapegoat them. And then that ends up being a trauma bond. And for those of you who have been scapegoated, how much do you think about it? Don't you think about it all the holidays, whenever the family birthdays come up, whenever you think of a fond moment of years ago, then you think about the scapegoating. I mean, it just keeps living in us. And that's also trauma bonding us to the family that scapegoated us. The good news is we can learn to detach from that. The next one is the intermittent reinforcement, like love bombing, and where you know, you'll be upset with them, you'll be out of favor with them, and then there'll be some love bombing going on. They'll play on your heartstrings. You know your dad loves you. Then comes the fear that comes afterwards was, you know, I, why can't you be a man, Jerry? Well, you just told me how wonderful I was yesterday. And now today we're shaming and doing that. This keeps us in the net when you're going back and forth between favor and disfavor. Favor and disfavor. If you don't, detach from that pendulum, then you will stay trauma bonded. So we want to detach from the pendulum. And I do talk about that in the program. The reason why we tend to get caught in that pendulum is because those of us who grew up in dysfunctional families, particularly narcissistic families, we believe the impossible and disbelieve the obvious. They show us, oh, I love you so much. You've always been my favorite child. You are just so wonderful. When just last week you were giving me all kinds of trouble over about 10 different things. But we'll somehow believe that they love us. And that's believing the impossible. And then we disbelieve the obvious that when the negative comes around, we go, oh, but they do love us even though they're treating us horribly right now. Now I'm disbelieving the obvious. They're not treating me well. Trauma bonding is an enmeshed relationship with an abuser that's emotional, that goes on. Helicopter parents enmesh with their kids. Narcissistic parents enmesh with their kids. So you can have helicopter and you can have narcissistic. You can have all kinds of uh, dynamics that really do keep us attached. So we have to learn to detach. One last dirty way I think of is having you doubt your reality. They'll say, well, that's ridiculous. Jerry, that's ridiculous. I know you don't believe that. Thought I just said I did believe that. And then they, oh no, you don't believe that. Don't ever say anything like that again. They want to even control your vocal cords and your voice. What do you mean don't ever say that again? I, I can say that if I want. You don't have to believe it and you don't have to agree with it, but I can say it. It's true. It's not necessarily meant to hurt. This is how I feel. and This is how I see things. Or I can't believe a Christian would believe the things you believe, Jerry. 
Then there's the shaming side. And then again, when they doubt our reality, and we've been doubting our own reality for years, going, I wonder if I, do I have it right? Do I have it understood? Am I the one that's wrong? Because it must be me. If, if everybody in the family thinks I'm wrong, then I must be, right? Depends on what kind of family you have. And that's why I think it's good to get an outside party's help with that. And if you go to the website, you can see ways that you can do some coaching with me or one of my associates. So what can we do? Stop trying to change the narcissistic parent. Stop trying to change the narcissistic family. By the way, when I say narcissistic family, and I've noticed several comments on YouTube, people go, oh, do you mean everybody in the family is a narcissist? No, I don't mean that. I mean the narcissism affects everybody in the family, and it becomes a narcissistic family with narcissistic dynamics within it. Just like if you have an alcoholic, you have an alcoholic family. But it doesn't mean everybody in the family drinks or even is an alcoholic. But the disease permeates everybody, just like I think narcissism does. Focus on your side of the tennis net. I use that in the program, the tennis net analogy. And stay on your side of the net and focus on you. How are you reactive? What are you thinking? What do you do when this happens? Focus on reducing your own reactivity, staying calmer, and being able to state more matter-of-factly and calmly what you see, think, and feel. Also, begin to build those inner boundaries of detachment. Because once I get to a stage where I'm going, well, so what? I now have a new inner boundary. Because it doesn't matter to me. Well, Jerry, I think you're stupid, a parent may say. And I'll go, and your point is, so what? I mean, okay. You think I'm stupid. Who cares? I mean, how does that change the world? What it sounds like is you've come to that belief, or maybe you haven't even come to that belief, but you're going to use that phrase to try to trick and dirty trick me back into being enmeshed with you. Because now I'm going to be upset. If I can upset you, I can capture you. And I can enmesh with you. In fact, we already are enmeshed. And so we want to get to the uh, so what side of things where well, I don't care if you think I'm stupid. That you're free to think that all you want and tell all your friends that. That's perfectly fine. So what's for lunch? Because it doesn't matter to me. That you, I'm going to stay out of your inner dialogue. And that's the next point I wanted to make is to stay out of their inner dialogue, their feelings and their actions detached from those, stay out of their emotional process. Because we get into their emotional process, then we're all churning up inside here with them. If you want to change, and if you were today not to be upset by them at all, if that were to happen, I gave you a magic pill, waved a magic wand, and you would not be upset by your narcissistic parent, no matter what they did, what would be the downsides? Would you have a relationship with them? And in fact, for many, a bad relationship is better than none at all because of their abandonment fears. Or they have a hope for change. Oh, but if I just keep, well, they are my mother. They are my father. And then I go, well, I know that. I haven't met, I don't think you got a new mother since the last time we met, if I'm talking about to a client. I know that's your mother, but I'm not sure I know what you mean when you say, well, that's my mother. Yes, it is. And your point is what? I know what their point is because I've said those very things. And that point is, I'm still enmeshed with them. And you're asking me to not do the societal-based, cultural-based enmeshment that we're supposed to keep if we're good children. Well... I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you'll subscribe, comment, and like this video, please. Have a great day, and be wise.